Now trains, I love ya. But fluid trains? Guys, you are absolutely the worst. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time we got trains, brother. Built a massive train hub inside of our base. And had some fun setting up all the complicated logistics that have to do with our rail network. And now today we're gonna be doing even more train stuff, brother. Along with some other little spicy projects. So remember to leave a like. But first off here, thank you, thank you, thank you for the comments in the last video. Because you pointed out an incredibly important issue to me. And that is about the trains we set up last time. So, honestly, once we set up our whole train station and got it working last time, I was pretty hunky-dory. I was happy. We're getting oil back in the base. We got a few resources. It was all good. And, oh, look at these fluid cars. They look amazing, right? Oh, <laughs> so much to be happy about. But you guys in the comments, you pointed out a big problem. Well, actually, it's not really a big problem. It's a small problem that has big implications. And that is that the fluid freight cars only hold 500 cubic meters of oil per freight car. Which is actually not a lot. Like, say we had a refinery, right? And say in Z refinery, we are making, yeah, plastic. Say we're making plastic. That uses 30 crude oil per minute. And most likely, we'd set up about 10 of these, so we'd use 300 crude oil per minute, the same as one full pipe. And that means that the oil from one train freight car would last a little over a minute. And the next freight car would come back like several minutes later because the train has to dock, it has to unload, go all the way out to the oil field, come all the way back, and that will take like another like two minutes. So what this issue is commonly referred to as is a throughput issue because we'll be getting enough oil in the oil fields and we'll be using the perfect amount back in base. It's just the train won't be able to supply things to and from there fast enough. But it will be possible to fix this problem. So what we have to do are make some changes in the oil fields over here. Number one thing is we have to add in industrial storage buffers. So these big boys for each of the extractors. So a pretty pipe network, go bye bye. And then in come the thick boys, because we're gonna have to store up a lot of oil at this train base. Because the next course of action is then to convert this entire train into a fluid train. So we're not gonna be grabbing any more of the ores, so no more iron, no more stuff from over there. Because like I said before, as the train is going from base to here and here to base, there's a lot of downtime. And if we can fill up a buffer with a thousand cubic meters of oil and fill two freight cars per trip, then we're moving and grooving more oil, less increasing the throughput. And now with everything converted, we just need to split up the industrial buffers uh, in between two fluid freight cars each, and that's GG. In fact, this project is perfect because we have two impure nodes and two normal nodes, which equates to about three exactly full pipelines. And we have six freight cars. So we got really lucky on this, honestly. But once all the oil is piped up and ready to go, there's one more thing we can do to increase our throughput. And that is add in a second oil train. So we'll have one train that will hopefully be back at base unloading. Then we'll set up another train that will be loading over here. So there'll be two in the system. That should work out pretty dang well. Or we might run into some other problems, but let's hope those don't happen. Oh wait, but hold up, hold up, hold up now. What's this? Sidetracked. This track is not straight. <laughs> I can't unsee it. I can't unsee it. We have to fix this first. All right, there we go. Much, much better. Uh, this is, I know this is such a tangent, but like to fix this, usually I just have like a straight piece of track after like the junction point, and we can line everything off of that, and then everything ends up looking smooth and nice. Would highly recommend trying this out if the crazy spaghetti tracks make you go insane. And then again, it was like half an inch off, but that's. <laughs> I can't have it. Anyway, though. 
We're gonna send this train back, then we'll build another train, and we'll hopefully time them together properly, and our throughput should be really good. All right, though, we know it's about to enter the base. Let's just send this guy off. We're moving and grooving. The other one's just getting to base. And yeah, having the train staggered like this will allow the oil pumps to actually, you know, <laughs> load up some oil so we can actually have something to transport. If the trains were too close together, it wouldn't be as effective. Alrighty, though. Goodbye, brother train. Enjoy your journey. Toodaloo. And we're back at base. Excellent! So that should fix our throughput issue. Now we have 900 oil back at base. <laughs> and what do we do with that now? It's kind of the next big question. Well, number one, I have to fix the docking area here. And then we have to get into warehousing. So I've actually did a little bit of warehousing, like on a live stream here. And I just set up like bins and belts and stuff of that nature. But I'm gonna have to switch this one up a lot. Like these little boys here, that only can handle like 300 cubic meters of oil. They gotta be switched out for the big boys. And then we'll kinda go from there. Righto, cool beans. All of the industrial fluid buffers are in. We are ready to rock and roll. And actually, I just have to show you something really, really quick that demonstrates or really shows our whole issue so well, it's insane. So, comparing the fluid car to a normal car, this holds 500 cubic meters of oil, right? You can assume that's like five stacks of oil, if it's still like a physical item. Compared that to a normal freight car, that is like one, two, three, four, five. This is the size of the fluid car, and then this whole thing is the size of a freight car, which is like, it's so crazy. Like it, oh gosh, it's nuts. Like seriously, I think it's worth packaging fuel if you're transporting it over long distances. Like it's just so, the fluid cars are just so completely ridiculous. You almost have to do it. So once we go for like the oil that's on the other side of the map, like over down here or over here, we're definitely packing it up and we're sending it inside of a freight car. There's, yeah, like 100%. Or we process the oil on site. I don't know, either or, just <laughs> these fluid cars, they're ridiculously bad. Anyway though, we have another ridiculously bad issue to deal with and that is bringing everything up to the top of our base. So, as I mentioned or showed earlier, all of this warehousing is at the exact bottom of our entire base. Like way down here. You can see that weird glitch where you see the stations through like the wall. And yeah, we're gonna have to bring everything, oh no, even from the floor beneath that, like down there, all the way up to there. So we're gonna have to make like a sort of spine project, like a mega spine project for both fluids and normal items. And when I say like a spine project, I'm referring to like super massive conveyor lifts. Similar to these, except these will be on a super massive scale because we just have so many items that are gonna be brought in by train. And I kinda realized there's only one real way we can bring everything up the base. And that's by switching out all of the supports behind our base and turning them into spines. So these will just continue all the way up, however high they need to go, and they'll essentially be super massive conveyor lifts and that should handle all of the train items. And I'll make the back of the base look pretty dang funky, but I, I don't know of a more clean way to do it, unless we have like the conveyor list all inside the base, but then we don't have enough room in there, so it's like, oh, it's kind of our only option. But it should still make the base look really cool. But then for all of the fluids, we're gonna do the same thing, except on this side of the base. So you know how we have that window that's not perfectly centered? Well, that was all part of the plan, because right to the left of it, we're gonna have a super massive pipe tower just bringing all of the oil and water we need up to the next levels of the base. However though, all of these projects are gonna take like a billion billion hours and I don't wanna spend like my whole life on them. So we're probably just gonna boop them and then move on to some oil processing. 
Yeah, that was a real good idea to boop this because, oh my gosh, that took a horrific amount of time. I don't like pumps. I don't like them. They just take forever to deal with. But we have dealt with them. And now we have 18, 18 pipes going all the way up to there. So we're only using three of them right now, so we have lots of spare capacity, which is great. But yeah, we have 18 pipes going up. Oh, now I have to like, oh, one thing that's really annoyed me with this whole thing was I have to like tear out the pumps because it doesn't let you build them in the middle because it encroaches clearance, which was the most annoying part of the whole thing. But we still managed to get her done. I do not want to do, why? I thought we were dead. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. We are definitely going to be packing oil and stuff like that if we're bringing in with trains later on. Like 100%. Or we're processing away from base. Either or. Making this tower was ridiculous. Oh my gosh. And you know what? I didn't even consider the amount of power this is going to take. Like, you have to go every five wall segments and put a pump, right? So one, two, three, four, five. Then you need, like, a pump. Oh, do I even bother calculating? You better believe I do. So there's 24 pumps per side here, and there's six sides, so 24 times six equals 144. There's 144 pumps on this? <laughs> Oof. And how much power is that gonna take? They each take four megawatts each. Four megawatts each? So 144 times four equals 576. We're using almost 600 megawatts to get the freaking oil up a couple floors. Okay, mind you, it's more than a couple floors, but oh. yeah, we're gonna be packing this stuff in the future or processing it somewhere else. On a positive note though, it really does look cool. Really adds that extra bit of aesthetic to the right side of the base there. And we'll be adding more stuff on the side too. So that's like the first little thing. So I like it. And then it's especially cool from up above because we have like this walkway bridge across so we can monitor like the fluids and movements and stuff. It's just a neat little thing. Ooh, a little laggy. That's all right. Yeah, I'm happy with this. It turned out really well. But now we get to have some fun with oil. So we're bringing up 900 oil. And now we get to figure out what the heck we can actually do with that. So obviously, we gotta refine it. Now we can break down some numbers. So it was really fun messing around with like the turbo fuel and stuff. So now it's gonna be equally, or even maybe more fun, dealing with plastic. Figuring out a cool way to make as much plastic and rubber as possible. So let me crunch some numbers here. Right on, so I gave it a hot minute here to figure out what would be the best way to make plastic, and I saw three routes. One route, where we use residual fuel, and a little bit of like, uh, just normal plastic making, to make recycled plastic, because it uses like, uh, rubber and fuel, 30 and 30, to make 60 plastic. And I was like, alright, that's a possible route. Another route I looked at, was looking at the polymer resin here, making just a ton of polymer resin, and then using that resin to make residual plastic and rubber. And that was pretty good too. 60 resin, 20 water, makes 20 plastic. Not, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. But honestly, I, after reviewing everything, just the base recipe, just from the outset, I think we're just gonna use this. 30 crude oil, 20 plastic, and 10 heavy oil residue. It works great. We need the heavy oil residue later on too, because we make the petroleum coke, and apparently this is used as a efficient coal replacement or for aluminum refinement. So like we need this in tier seven essentially. So I'm like, cool. Kinda knocks out both things. It's a one-step shop, and it seems really convenient. So we're just gonna be doing that. So we're gonna be making plastic and rubber. And we have 900 oil, and each of these recipes takes 30 crude oil, so <laughs> it's like the easiest thing in the world. Nothing to even complain about. We just slap down a couple of them refineries and call it a day. All right, and almost 100 refineries later, and we're ready to rock and roll. So all of these are gonna be producing plastic for now. We might switch them out, 
But honestly, I, I don't know what to do with the plastic and rubber yet. I have to do like a super big shopping list and plan for like what our production's gonna be in the base. So for now, everything's just making plastic and we're pretty much just gonna throw it all in the resource sink. We'll save a little bit for whatever, but yeah. If we're gonna be producing quite a bit. This should be about 600 plastic if I calculated things correctly. And we'll also be making 300 heavy oil residue, which will just be going into these industrial bins and then we go flush. Because if this stuff builds up, then the whole system goes down. But anyway, the trains are all moving and grooving. All of the oil is getting back to base. It's actually making it up here too, so the little spine thing works as well. So we just have to make sure that this new system works and that the flow through rates are all good. So that turns on all the power. How much power are we using now? Uh, okay. So that went from 6,000-ish to about, okay, just a whole like extra thousand megawatts. Nice. And that is quick. That is a lot of freaking plastic, brother. <laughs> but how's the system doing? I put in a few industrial fluid buffers. I just put in a few of them to measure what the heck's gonna happen. But it's going fine. If the net is zero, that means everything is working perfectly. Okay. Oh, hey, I see we have some extra residue. Would you like to be not here? Thank you. There we go. Gets rid of that. Everything seems to be working just fine. Yeah, the residue is going into there. Good. This stuff's backing up quite a bit. Oh gosh. Wait, we're making 600 per minute. Why would this ever back up? Because we have one line over there that's going into its own resource sink. What's the big dealio reno? Not sure. But honestly, having things back up because we're producing too much is a problem I like to see. Better than not producing enough, right? Okay, or something just not working properly. Why isn't this loading up? All right, we might have found our first issue. Why, why you no go? Flow rate's 86. Hmm, maybe we've run out of oil downstairs. That could be it. There's like a few problems. One problem could be that we don't have enough pumps on the pump spine. Or actually, no, that's the only two things it could be. The head lift thing on the spine is wrong, or the train's throughput is messed up. Let's find out what's going down, brother. Yeah, it's going up. Head lift is fine. So I suppose we didn't have enough oil built up downstairs? Did I forget to hook something up? Let's go find out. Oh, by the way, <laughs> and this might look a little bit different, but I added a sleeve to this now. I noticed I was getting a little couple frame rate issues, and I think that's because of all the shadows that we're rendering in from this. Like the sun shines from there through this and onto this wall, and that was having quite a heavy toll on the game. So I just covered everything in shadows, so we're all good. Now, yeah, everything's working just fine. All right, so a train just unloaded. So there's, what on earth? This, there's no reason why this shouldn't be at 300 flow rate. Oh gosh, hold up here, no! I found the problem. It's with the bumps. Apparently I spaced them out incorrectly. Oh God. They're supposed to go up 20 meters, and each of these wall segments is 4 meters, so 4, 8, 12, 16, and then 20. So we should even have like a little bit of room to spare. Head lift is 22? Wait, is that why? Because we're 2 meters over the head lift? That's why this whole system breaks down? Oh wait, of course that's why. Because I went up for 5 every single time, and then... Obviously, times that by all the pumps that are here. Of course that's gonna break the whole system. Okay. So I think that's what's going down. And also, I learned something new. Apparently you have to go four and a half, or probably to play it safe, like four wall segments instead of five in order for the head lift to be okay. Well, that is unfortunate. All right, looks like we have found the problem. It was the pumps the whole time. So that entire big massive pump spine needs to be completely redone pretty much. Oof, that's gonna be like 800 megawatts of power. Very oof. 
All right, well, lesson learned. That's why you test things out before you go large scale with things. Uh, <laughs> very important, very important thing to keep in mind. At least we're working now. And also very importantly, we have learned that pumping stuff vertically, bad idea. Bad idea. Just package it and use a conveyor lift. The packing and unpacking, it will save you such a headache and it will save you actually a ton of energy too, so just please. Save yourself the hassle. Learn from my mistakes. Do not pump vertically. It is a nightmare. Anyway though, that's gonna be all for today. But before we end things off, there's just a quick note I wanna touch on. And that's that I missed an upload on Tuesday. I usually upload about three times a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And then I stream on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But yeah, I missed an upload. And that's just because, as you might have already gathered, I put a lot of time into making YouTube videos and streaming. And I have two other uh, side projects slash businesses I run too. So I stretch myself pretty thin. So apologies if I ever do miss an upload. Sometimes I just need a break. And if you're ever wondering what's going on, you can follow me on Twitter. And that's where I'll kind of discuss, hey, this is what's going down, in case it's something more serious. But yeah, just wanted to quickly mention that because a lot of people were concerned in the comments. But anyway, that's gonna be all for today, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, please remember to leave a like, and I hope to see you in the next one. But, have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs> <laughs>